Hello Internet, my name is Mark and welcome back to finally another language video. I'm a senior at NYU, double majoring in language and mind, which is like a cool split between psychology, linguistics, and philosophy, and computer science with a minor in game design. My Duolingo versus Rosetta Stone video has been growing linearly for the past year and a bit, and I figure it's about time I make another language video. I'm preparing an undergraduate research project in second language acquisition, so I tend to put a bit more pressure on myself when it comes to language videos. Anyway, the plan for today is to discuss what I believe to be a fairly efficient learning outline for learning a second language that involves language learning apps. Quick disclaimer that none of this research is based on anything empirical and simply my own experiences and my own dabbles in second language acquisition. I'm interning at a child language lab, so I'm actually just only now learning how research really works, but I found in my own experience that knowing the structure of language, i.e. basic linguistics, has been super helpful and that's where a lot of this stems from. Also, quick note that whenever I use the word adult in this video, I mean anyone past the age of about 13 or 14, which is the rough end of what's known as the critical period. Also, whenever I say second language, I don't mean only second language. A second language is anything you've learned past the age of 13. So something you didn't learn as you were growing up as a kid. Without further ado, let's jump into how language learning apps aren't really as effective as they market themselves to be. I mean, do you really expect to learn a language with five or 10 minutes a day in just an app? After I go over that foundation, I'll discuss how language learning apps can be a very good tool in a tool set for us to learn second languages. I'll be using an app called LingApp, who has kindly provided me with a premium account that I've been working with for about a month and a half now. This video isn't about the app, nor is it a review or anything, but I'll get to that later in the video. For now, thanks for clicking and let's jump into the main content. The first thing I want to ask you is why are you learning your target language? Apps like LingApp or Duolingo rely on aspects of gamification or extrinsic motivation to keep you incentivized to keep learning. I'll go over why this is a problem in a little bit, but I want to ask you what your intrinsic motivation, what your innate reason for studying this language is. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about involves going into the grammar of your target language, understanding the patterns and such that are evolving under the hood, going into what's actually happening in the language and not just learning things through implicit memorization. Stuff like that can get kind of boring, no matter how helpful it is, so having a strong sense of intrinsic motivation can be very, very useful, if not necessary. That being said, pause the video and think about it for a bit. Let me know in the comments down below what your motivation is. Personally, one of my biggest fears is getting stuck in a country in which I know nothing about the language, and I also really want to help people communicate more clearly to translate things between different people. I have no idea when those times are going to come, but language learning is a constant journey anyway. Now that you've said what your motivation is and what is going to be driving you what your resolve is, which is one of the things on my board today, the first step of my strategy is to expose yourself to the target language. Immersing yourself in a location where they speak the language is the best way to learn, because that's how kids do it. So we should do that too, right? Well, in my unresearched and partially educated opinion, I disagree. Language apps often say that you can learn a language in just five to 10 minutes a day. In theory, that's true after 70 years, but after a year of learning on an app for just five to 10 minutes a day, we think we've been studying a language for a year and then find ourselves incredibly inadequate, especially as we compare ourselves to an eight-year-old. The thing that I want to drive at in this video is that we, as adults who have gone past the critical period of learning a language, must learn like adults, not like children. We need to understand how language itself works on a fundamental level before jumping into just memorizing random things. Now, exposing ourselves in a language is an inevitable necessity. I'm not saying that we shouldn't immerse ourselves or that that's not a good way to learn a language. However, we cannot say that exposing yourself like a child is the only thing you should do because we are not children. We do not have the same neuroplasticity as children. That's not to say we can't learn a language. You still can learn a language. I have found that when I started teaching myself the grammar rules of Russian, my knowledge increased tenfold because I understood what was happening. We'll get into that grammar later, but for now, find ways to expose yourself to your target language. This is also going to be key for measuring your progress, and we'll get into that in a bit. While you're going for a run or making breakfast, put on a Russian podcast on Spotify, or maybe take a step back and do something like Coffee Break, where they read a passage out and then talk about it in English. Whether it's a deep dive or pretty surface level, keep your ears open. Watch TV shows and movies and see if they're available in other languages. Even better, Find TV shows or movies that are made in your target language, not just translated and dubbed over. For Danish, The Rain has been a really good show. For Brazilian Portuguese, I've really enjoyed The 3%. You'll see this tip really everywhere, honestly. And it's a great way to get used to the sounds and, as we'll jump into in a bit, identify what you're learning in an app or in a book and being like, hey, I know those words because there have been times when I'm watching a TV show in Russian and I hear words and I'm like, I know that one, I know that one. 
So since we can't really travel anywhere right now, this is your best bet. Now I briefly mentioned progress and I want to mention right now that exposure is where you're going to notice the most market improvement in your own progress. Exposure is when you're going to all of a sudden realize, wait a minute, I just understood all of the words in that sentence when six months ago it was all gobbledygook to me. This progress will not be sudden, but I found with my own studies that all of a sudden I noticed these things and I'm like, huh, that all feels like it happened overnight. As I've been working on Danish and Ling app, I have noticed more and more that while I'm watching the rain, Danish is becoming less gobbledygook to me and more, hey, I'm recognizing words and verbs here and there. Now, I can't learn language segmentation as a child will, that's not really possible, but by learning as an adult, I can kind of artificially learn segmentation. Now, we aren't kids. Exposure is incredibly important for us to expose ourselves to the sounds, to the common phrases, and to see language and practice. But as adults, we must learn. And as adults, we must learn actively. Learning is inevitable, just in general for everything you'll ever do. Child language development, as I'm learning in my first language acquisition class, is even more different than I originally thought it was from adult language acquisition. I feel like I could talk about the differences for ages because they are... There are many of them. But the thing that I don't like hearing is that, oh, we should look at how children learn languages to learn languages as adults. The only thing we should take away is to expose ourselves. Children literally learn so fast, it's incredible, but we cannot learn just like them. But Mark, if we can't learn like children learn, what do we as adults have that children don't? Glad you asked. Simply put, as adults, our cognitive functions are just further developed. All in all, as adults, we should learn how languages work. Learning what's going on under the hood of language production and this is pretty much grammar and stuff like phonology if you want to get into improving your accent. A really good example is if you want to produce a better accent, as children, you can make every sound in the world and you narrow that down as you learn languages. As adults, we're biased. We are limited to the sounds that we know. I'll talk about this more in a few minutes because I want to get into grammar, which might not sound exciting. But as adults, we have to learn how to remake the sounds that we lost the ability to when we were learning our first language. But when it comes to really learning a language, I believe that we should learn the underlying Lying basics of linguistics. I'm gonna get to a cool Japanese example in just a few minutes when we jump into apps and vocab, but one anecdote I want to mention is that in Russian, when I realized that word order doesn't matter, things became a lot more clear to me. One of the biggest critiques I had about Rosetta Stone is that it relies so heavily on giving you all of this data and for you to pick apart the pattern on your own. Then I picked up this and it talked about cases and all the different things that can happen with declensions on nouns and word order not mattering. Russian still isn't very easy, but it makes so much more sense. This is where language learning apps come in. The problem with language learning apps is that they teach you segmented and specific information. You will likely never need to know about fishes talking to each other or ducks reading the newspaper. In my use of Ling app over the past month and a half, I've worked on becoming more consciously aware about how we can leverage learning apps to be useful for us, how we can adapt them into the bigger picture, because they're not going to teach us about grammar. They're going to show us several sentences and words, and we're expected to learn those through implicit memorization and recognize the patterns, but as adults, we can do so much more than that. We can make our lives so much easier, but let's get into it. For this portion of the video, I will be using Ling app. They reached out at the beginning of the year and asked me if I wanted to give their premium app a shot. I said, yeah, why not? It was really fun to incorporate it in this video and, you know, force me to use something that's not the common Duolingo or Rosetta Stone in a video like this. They're not paying me to review it or say something explicitly good about it, hence my usage of it in this video. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description down below, but let's get on to the point, yeah? Language apps work by using gamification to keep you hooked. As you complete a lesson, you get experience and you get a streak, so on and so forth. If you took away streaks and experience and the games, would you stick with a language app? Now, the problem is all of the sentences they give you becomes implicit memorization at some point. What we want to do is make implicit memorization into instinct, but that just can't happen if you don't understand what's going on. Now, I will admit, the one thing that you can't make instinctual is vocabulary. One of the beauties of language, also one of its defining features, is that it is combinatorically complex. For example, I can make a sentence that has likely never been said before, like many of the sentences in this video, and yet, you still understand what I'm saying, right? The thing is, that's because I know English grammar. It's my native language. If you have to memorize what apps are telling you, this gets encoded differently and it's a longer story there. But what you cannot do instinctually is vocab. No matter how good your grammar is, if you don't know what a camera is called, you can't reference that camera. You could use circumlocution, sure, but you have to know vocab at some point. That being said, this is one of the biggest and I believe most helpful uses for language learning apps. Do a few lessons every day that you might need and your vocab skills will strengthen. The best way 
to learn vocab is to consistently repeat it over time in a spaced repetition style, and language apps are great for that. For example, on LingApp, all of the lessons are segmented into various topics, and it's great. They teach you basic words and basic phrases and use those in more complex sentences. This whole learning argument I'm making about learning grammar is really weak when it comes to implicit memorization of vocabulary, and this is where language learning apps can make up that weakness. This is where they are a tool in that arsenal. They will also come in very important in just a few minutes, but no matter how much grammar you know or how good your pronunciation gets, there will be no way to learn vocabulary without exposing yourself in some way. And in LingApp, where it's segmented into various different topics is a great way to learn it. That's the thing about the apps. They have a great direction in terms of pacing yourself for vocab. The sentences do increase in complexity. This is one of the best ways that apps can be a great tool for us to use. Also, language follows the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the language you know will cover 80% of the time you're going to use it. You don't need to know everything about a language. You just need to know 20% of it and you'll get by. You'll learn the rest through application. And in terms of vocab, think back to any vocab tests you did back in grade school. It's the same thing. I would never have learned the word exorbitant if it wasn't for chapter nine of my vocab test in my sophomore year. I would have just called things too expensive. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. We'll get back to language learning apps in just a few minutes and how you can efficiently use the random sentences they give you. But for now, if you have a strong intrinsic motivation, I would recommend that you get a grammar book in your target language. I would really recommend the Four Dummies book if you have them, and Four Dummies is, you know, Four Dummies. It's it's outlined very well. The Russian one is really good. I can't speak to the rest. I'm not affiliated with Four Dummies, but I would really recommend you get a book. Now, why do I need a book? I can just use the language learning app. No. Now you can jump into LingApp and choose Japanese, for example, and you can go through the lessons. That's fine. You'll learn vocab. Maybe you'll recognize structure for word ending. You'll pick up some of the kana along the way. However, you will give yourself a significant advantage when you're starting off in Japanese if you understand what it means for Japanese to be a subject-object-verb language, whereas English is a subject-verb-object language. Subject-verb-object-subject what? Subject-object-verb, or SOV, and subject-verb-object, or SVO, are structures of language. These three letters can be combined in any way, and many of them are much rarer than others. While Russian is technically a subject-verb-object language, it doesn't have to be. Let's get into an example of what this means with Japanese. For example, let's take the boy throws the ball. In English, we know from our grade school years that the boy is the subject, throws is the verb conjugated for he, and the ball is the object. He throws the ball. Subject, verb, object. Okay, now back to Japanese, which is subject, object, verb. If you plug the boy throws the ball into Google Translate, you get Let's pull this apart. If we look at the boy throws, we get so if we're coming from English, then naturally the boy throws the ball should be shonen wa nagimasu boru, except it's not. In fact, the transliteration of Japanese would be the boy the ball throws. While it might not be the right way to say this sort of thing, it demonstrates the point of SOV. I imagine shonen is some specific change in the grammar of the sentence as opposed to otakonoko, but you might understand this pattern after a while. You might be like, oh wow, you know, that's so funny that the verb comes after the object in this case. But if you teach yourself that at the beginning, imagine how much of a leg up you can have. Once you know in your head that, okay, I have to say the subject, then the object, then the verb, the translation in your head becomes a bit easier. Language is beautiful because, as I mentioned earlier, it allows us to express things that have never been said. As a result, we need to learn how to produce our own utterances. For Russian, the word order is irrelevant. The forms of the nouns themselves have different declensions. It's really weird. And when I first learned this in the Four Dummies book that I mentioned earlier, I was like, okay, this is all making sense now. It's through additional materials that we can use alongside language learning apps that help us understand this fundamental structure. We are so used to using our native language that if we don't take the time to understand the linguistics, the basic language structure of it, we can be blind to totally different structures. Imagine jumping into calculus without algebra. You can still learn it, but it's a whole lot more confusing without these fundamentals. All in all, our native languages are innate. We should unwrap them so we can apply these rules to a language that we want to learn so, where do apps fit in? Well, I'm glad you asked. We can choose to actively observe the grammar rules that are happening. For example, in LingApp, I should not just mindlessly translate something. For example, here in LingApp, and excuse my accent, my accent sucks. When it comes to this, you don't just want to mindlessly punch in what you think the translation is. See if you can pull apart the grammar of the sentence. Okay, I am eating. Okay, so pull apart the language. Morgan Mel, well, I know that's breakfast. Mel, mein, sost. Um, 
Mal must be with, right? So my sost, my sister. Pull apart each part of speech that's coming up. Then go and translate. You can easily get through these lessons by just going through the motions, but you want to actively pay attention. In order to learn a language, in my opinion, we must learn about language itself. Especially as adults, we need to look at the underlying structure. Going back to exposure, as you learn these things, something like segmentation becomes easier. You start to hear, you know, some Danish might change from to you notice these things through exposure. Now, as you pay attention to these patterns in language, use them for when you next apply the language. And speaking of application, it is the one thing you must absolutely do. As this goes with learning just about anything, I'll try to keep it brief. As a result, you must apply your target language to learn it. If you have the answers to a math problem as you do the problem, you will never learn where you get stuck. If you never push yourself to try and figure out the solution, you will never learn how it works. If you can, speak with a native speaker of the language. If it's embarrassing and you want to duck out like I often do, then let that humility fuel you in a way. Not going too far into the philosophical argument, I believe that language is representative of how we think. If you do not try to speak or write in your target language, such as staying in the realm of a language learning app or just one source of learning, you will never learn how to express yourself in that language. You'll never learn how you speak because in your native language, it's just such a default. For starters, sit down for just two to five minutes at the end of every day and just record yourself speaking into a voice note. Even if it's only a few words that you remember from that day or the same sample sentences that you learned in LingApp that day, that's something. Write it down if you want. Maybe you don't want to speak it. One thing I did to kind of boost my French learning was make a weekly gaming video, but the commentary was in French. I quickly learned that the things I often said in English were really difficult because I have no idea how to express them in French. You'll find yourself saying the same things over and over. And more importantly, you'll identify the holes in your knowledge. As you identify these holes, that's where you go back and fix them, which we'll get to in just a minute. Finding yourself unsure about when to use a nominative case or generative case, great. Write that down and revisit it later. In addition, this application is how we track progress. You said just a few words today, a sentence the next week, and you look back in three months and you're saying entire sentences in a row. You got to keep the end game in mind because improvement, if you want to get somewhere with it, is a long game. Now, will five minutes of application do a lot for you? No, but pushing yourself yourself to apply and failing, finding the holes in your knowledge will make language learning apps more useful because they don't handhold you while you're speaking into your phone. Let me know in the comments down below where you're at right now. Then come back to this video in a week, a month, a few years time and let me know where you're at then. I'd love to hear it. As children, we don't only not fear failure because we don't expect to do well. It's the fact that no one has any expectations of children to succeed and therefore children don't have any expectations of themselves for a while. It's funny because if you look into parents or something teaching kids proper ways of saying language, they will often ignore it. Accept being terrible at a language. Be open to possibly fixing things. From learning the difficult stuff, from poking holes in your knowledge, you will gain a deeper understanding and that is where the true learning will occur. Now, on the note of language learning apps, as I talked about in my Rosetta Stone versus Duolingo video, Rosetta Stone has a really cool feature called Stories, and I love it. I love it because it forces you to apply the language. You have to read stories and you get to listen, and there's an even an option to record yourself speaking back. LingApp has a cool feature called Chatbot. Chatbot is really easy to get by. You can just press the buttons and it'll give you experience. Now, that's just going through the motions and you get nothing from it. When something comes up on the chatbot, don't look at the options. Think about how you would respond. Without clicking translate, see, okay, do I know what this person's saying? If they say, bonjour, it's like, okay, hmm, should I say, oh, what, uh, I think comment ça va was the thing that I should say, uh, okay, I'll say comment ça va. And then you go to the options and make sure you understand each of the options. The idea here is to make yourself think. Don't just go through the motions. When the voice in the other line says, bonjour, don't just pick one of the three or four options, make your own first. When you're reading things, say them out loud. Play into both sides of the conversation to the chatbot and maybe once the conversation ends because they are really, really short, see if you can play both sides of the conversation. Where might it go from there? All in all, for language learning apps, you need to use them as a tool in your toolbox for some greater purpose. You can go through chatbot in seconds, probably. You can go through the motions of the app by just remembering which word goes well. You can just click through the lessons, honestly. It's really easy to get by in both LingApp and Duolingo and probably every single one out there. However, you will gain 
absolutely nothing from that. Absolutely nothing. You might as well go pick up a picture book, flip through it, not look at a single word, and just have fun looking at the pictures. When it asks you to translate, do it on your own, in your head first. Don't just use process of elimination because you will not learn this way. If you get something wrong, spend time understanding where you went wrong. Don't just say, oh, oh okay, continue. My point is this. If you just go through the motions of a language learning app, or if you just go through the motions of a Four Dummies book, you will find yourself in a very familiar predicament you might already find yourself in. From, yeah, my four years of Spanish in high school and I learned nothing, to, yeah, my 600 day streak on Ling app, but I don't know how to speak the language. You must use the apps as a tool. Ling app has a bunch of great features. The vocab is expansive. The chatbot is pretty cool, but these features mean absolutely nothing if you don't choose to actively think about them. And it is with other things like language learning books that help us make the most of what language apps have to offer. And if you actually want to learn, you have to go outside of gamification and dig into your intrinsic motivation to find your resolve for learning a language. So finally, we'll jump into the last bit of this cycle and that is fix and repeat. Whenever I told you to write down what you might have been getting wrong, or when you're actively listening to whatever you've chosen to expose yourself to, this is where you find the gaps in your knowledge and actively work to fix them. Try really hard to think about where you're stuck on a math problem and then look at the answer because when you find out where you get stuck, that's when you really learn. Same thing with language. Instead of just going through the motions of a language learning app, you can actively teach yourself the grammar rule so that when you go to that app's future lessons, you have a much easier time. Outline what you're gonna do and actively listen and watch TV shows. Challenge yourself, turn off the subtitles, things like that. All you have to do is identify the holes in your knowledge, that's it. Without defining the problem, there does not exist a solution. As you poke more holes in your knowledge, you'll find more things to learn. And when you patch all of those holes, speak to a native speaker because they will absolutely tear you apart and make you question everything you think you know. So real quick, if you made it through the entire video, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed and I commend you quite a bit. It's not the most entertaining video I imagine, but it's something I'm really passionate about. And I imagine that if you're here watching the whole thing, you're passionate about it too. Now go ahead and write something for one of each of the four categories of the phases mentioned in this video. Expose, learn, apply, and fix. That way, when you sit down for language practice, you can remove the friction of, oh, what should I do now? Immediately jump into that Russian for dummies. Immediately jump into your next Japanese lesson on Ling app. It's not just, oh, I'll do a few lessons on Ling app. It's I'll learn 10 words on Ling app today and do a couple of pages of Russian exercises. Drop a comment and let me know what you'll do to work on this because I'm curious about what other people think and I'm curious if people can get some value from this. All in all, learning a language is no easy feat, especially as adults, but it's not impossible. You simply have to leverage the tool at your disposal, whether that be language apps like LingApp and books like For Dummies or your cognitive functions that you have as an adult. Making mistakes is more difficult as adults because we're more cognizant of it and we don't have the freedom as we did as children. We can utilize similar environments as children, but we will never be able to fully jump into the full neuroplastic seven to 10 years a child will have learning their native language. In other words, whenever people say, oh, I didn't learn anything in my four years of high school Spanish and you know, the seven year olds better than I I am. Well, it's because you're comparing your 100 hours of Spanish to a seven-year-old's seven full years of Spanish. Work at your own pace. In other words, don't measure your progress against some kid, measure it against yourself. Something that helps me is casting myself into the future. Several months from now, I'm, you know, I'm in Japan and I'm thinking, wow, I really wish I started learning Japanese a couple of months ago. Well, I'm at a couple of months ago now, and here we are. The thing is, apps alone in just five to 10 minutes a day will not teach you all that you need to know. Languages need to be studied, and apps like LangApp or Rosetta Stone are great tools to use, but they need to be used in tandem with other tools. If you wanna give LangApp a shot, there's a link in the description down below. If you wanna look up for dummies, I would just check on Amazon or something. Put together your tool set, and you'll be well equipped for your learning sessions. We cannot control when things happen to us, but, what we can control is how well equipped we can be for whenever those moments do arise, whether they be tomorrow, a week from now, or three years from now. The important thing is that we started today. Thanks for watching, keep up the learning, and as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.